Hi, my name is Martha Ann Kennedy, and I'm an artist living in Colorado, San Luis Valley. This is a short video about how I made watercolor using historic Rollins Red pigment. I first learned about this pigment from the Facebook page of the Little Snake River Museum. And after I saw something about its history, I really wanted to see what the color was like. But you can't buy it anymore, even though it was commonly used in the late 19th century. So if I was going to see what the paint was like, I would have to make my own. First, I had to find pigment, and I did. I found it on, for sale online in a little company on the east slope of the Sierra Nevada mountains called Geological Supply Company. It's a bunch of retired geologists and rock lovers who go around the country picking up rocks, cleaning them up, and selling them to schools as specimens for geology classes. When I told them what I planned to do with the Rollins Red, they were as excited about the project as I was. The first step in making your own paint is grinding the pigment. The Little Snake River Museum has the grinder that was used back in the day just for this purpose. I don't have anything like that, so what I got was a mortar and pestle. Mine is granite and it works fine, and it's also the way pigment has been made for tens of thousands of years. Other materials I needed to make watercolor included a wire screen, and I happen to have my grandma's old flower sifter. Water color goes through an evaporation process, and for that you need a jar, some, and then you need something to draw the extra water from the top of the pigment and something to strain that through. I used a nylon gift bag I had lying around. Once your pigment has gone through the evaporation process and has been strained, you need something to bind the pigment together so that it would adhere to the paper and the little particles would adhere to themselves. I used gum arabic, which is the sap of the acacia tree. It's easy to get in a dehydrated state, and to make the binder, you mix it with water and preservative to keep it from molding. I used rosemary oil, but clove oil is another popular choice. I think the kind of oil you use depends on what you want to smell. Once you have all your materials, you're ready to start making paint. And what that means, it's time to grind. And you will grind and grind and grind and grind. And after you've ground it, you will probably grind some more. And you will be filled with doubt, which will lead you to do some more grinding. And that's what I did. But after I saw that I had a powder that looked like it might work, I took this powder and I put it through my grandma's flour sifter. I took what came out of that and put it in a jar and filled the jar half full with water. This is the beginning of your evaporation process that will lead to real watercolor. You let your jar of water and pigment sit for a while, a few days, until the layers begin to separate. Then you take your syringe or a turkey baster, if you'd rather. I think it's a good idea to keep your cooking stuff separate from your paint making stuff. And you draw the clear water off the top with your syringe. I let my pigment sit for a little while longer because I had never done this before and I wanted to get it right. You take this after it's sat for a while and you pour it through your fine mesh. I used a nylon gift bag that I happened to have lying around and it worked perfectly. You could use pantyhose if you actually have some, I don't. And this pretty mud that you pour into a flat dish will become your watercolor. You let this dry completely until it kind of curls up on itself and you put it in a jar. Your jar does not have to be airtight for watercolor. So you, you know any little jar that you happen to have lying around will probably be fine as long as it's you know clean. Then you pulverize these little flakes of color and you add your binder. 
how much binder you use depends on how much powder you end up with. In my case, it wasn't very much. The recipe for binder is one to two. So I used half a teaspoon of gum arabic to a teaspoon of water. I added a few drops of the preservative and I stirred it all up. I used, put as much binder into this jar, jar with my powder as I needed to get the consistency of paint that I wanted. I just went for a, a paste. I had enough binder left over that I put it in the refrigerator to keep it from molding and maybe get to use it again. Once I had paint, and this is paint, I was ready to do a picture. I took a small piece of watercolor paper and I painted this tree, which is obviously Rollins Red, but not just that. You might not see the Rollins Red in other places in this painting. It's a really cooperative, easy paint to work with. I used it with conventional watercolors. I mixed it with green to make brown. It's part of the shadow everywhere around the hills and under the tree. It's a great color and I loved working with it. It works perfectly with other paints and that's what you want your watercolor to do. And nothing is wasted. You can use the leftover pigment that's too rough for watercolor for oil paint or acrylic. So, I hope you have as much fun making your own paint as I had making mine. Thank you so much.